the fact that I watched the control tools in the People's Temple being developed, you know, we've, we've, um, you know, we, the find the big final um, day, um, there's just so much I can say about all of it. Uh, and um, I want to say that last, last time um, when you interviewed me, I, um, I think I was saying that how I had um, gone down the side of a window on a rope mm -hmm. uh, at the, um, because I was under guard um, at the uh, San Francisco temple. And um, um, yet the control methods were supposed to be like hands in the pocket. So the only really thing to look like a loving socialist group that you could do is you could put like guards on them to protect them. In other words, it's similar to what society might do, you know. In other words, give up your freedoms, Preston Jones, for your security, you know. And so this kind of thing. And one thing I, f I failed to mention was so grabbing, uh, grabbing to the mind is that when I was over the Gray, Round, uh, Gray, uh, Gray Rabbit bus station uh, and I uh, had uh, Chris Lewis and Jim McElvain, uh, both the heads of security that had worked for me, so they were very respectful. They didn't come and tell me what I had to do. Yeah. They were kind of admiring it that I was standing up to Jim Jones and that they didn't dare. And they said, Jim wants to talk to you on the phone right now. And this is similar to the police. These are guards that are huge. And they're similar to the police for the, for the temple. They're just the same almost, right? It's like, yeah. now, he said he wants to talk to you on the phone right now. And I said, I am not getting on the telephone with Jim just to hear him tell. I said, you both know he's going to tell me that I'm going to take a long walk off of a short pier and he wants to protect me from that. Mm. I said, I don't need to hear any more cheap Italian Sicilian protection racket BS. Like, we're going to protect you and your windows won't be broken anymore. Just pay uh, your dues. Right. And then who's breaking the windows? Oh, yeah. The guy that's protecting you from the windows being broken breaking if you don't pay so then they went back and they looked at me like good luck because they knew that 60 people on the planning commission were waiting for them to come back with me and they were all waiting Jim Jones had a group of the planning commission together and all 60 people were sitting there tapping their toe waiting for this confrontation between the, the temple security and me to take place. And if I may, and you know, as someone who's a lot older and stuff, just give me, uh, in, I, I don't engrandize anything, but give me a liberty once in, once in a while. I'm gonna tell, they hadn't met anybody as creative and imaginative as I was, if I may say so. Mm -hmm. As they walked out, I walked over to the owner and I said, uh, sir, I had seconds to win him over completely. And I said, sir, and uh, this is the position America is in. We've just got moments before the wrong action could be taken by the wrong person. And this can all accelerate. Mm -hmm. So we need to decelerate it with teaching and truth and decelerate it all and not wind up in some Mad Max world. But they went back and suddenly we had 60 people descending on the Greyhound, I mean on the uh, Grey Rabbit bus station. So in the meanwhile, I went over and I said to the guy, I'm in what looks like a cult. And no one at that time was even using the word associated with People's Temple. It took, it took after those deaths mm. for the word cult to even work in anyone's mind. You see, 
because he was acting like everything was above board. You could call the Hare Krishna's a cult because they had pink robes and a ponytail, right? But yeah. you couldn't call the People's Temple, uh, the Disciples of Christ denomination, a cult, or you call the Disciples of Christ denomination, or you call them Jesus Christ a cult. <laughs> and so I, he said, I knew somebody that was in a situation just like you. I said, really, how, how fortunate for me. So you know that here in a moment, I said, maybe just a few minutes, you're going to have 60 people come through your door, probably false accusing me to back you off, and they're going to grab me. He said, I have a van in the back. I said, he said, I have a van in the back. And uh, he called the guy over. He said, I want you to do everything this guy says and take him to my house. I'd never met this guy. Take him to my personal house hmm. where he'll be safe. There's going to be, and why would he believe me? But he believed me. He said, there's going to be a bunch of people coming in here trying to kidnap him here in a minute. And uh, I'll never forget the, the gay guy that came along that was there. It was just comedic. And it was a life or death situation. And uh, I said, will you help me with the trunk to the to the the gay guy and the trunk holding my positions had a handle on each end like trunks do and he pulled the the van around to the i said don't pull it around to the front don't pull it around to the front pull the van around to the side and then i'm going to and then as i was getting ready to take that trunk out of there I knew I was about to be swatted like a bug. Hmm. So I looked on his wall, and there was a poncho and a pair of John Lennon glasses and a wig. And I put the long-haired wig on and put the John Lennon glasses on, and I said, these will be at your house. And I put the poncho on, and I carried it, and they came in, 60 people from the planning commission, from the People's Temple, cars blocking the road, taking over the road, saying he's done some things that are horrible and wrong. They've come in and blocked the road, and, uh, and they own the police. And they, they came in there, and me and the guy carried the trunk right through them. Now, I hope that some of the survivors that were there can watch this. Because it was, uh, we carried the trunk. I was the guy with the long hair. I just got it off the wall with the John Lennon sunglasses. And I, we walked right through your dumb selves. We walked right through all of you, right through all of you, and walked over and put the trunk in the van and drove out. And I said, all y'all, except the driver, because when I went around the corner with the trunk, I told them to pull the, and it blocked the vision momentarily, just for a moment, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I said, I want all y'all except the driver to lay down, you know, and, and so that we, to see a van, in case they think that was him, you know, to see a van driving out, and I said, now you, you drive out, and don't look, don't look at nobody, nothing, just drive out, and I'm like down on the floor, and this gay guy says, <clears throat> You're such a man. I, I want to meet a man like you someday. I said, hold it for now. <laughs> Wait till we're out of this situation. Just hold it down. Because he'd start to get up. Whenever he'd start to talk, he'd start to get up. And I'd say, we're not out of this situation yet. <laughs> you know, hold that for now. It was just a funny moment. 